because when we are coming on the stage, the most part of time, opera is written so good, look like. We have time really to use to this atmosphere and to go to the story. So we are no anymore, look like I'm not anymore Anastasia, I'm Rosina. And okay. Rosina, she don't have any hesitation. She don't, um, how, how to say, she's not nervous about audience, about what the people think. She's Rosina. <laughs> it's much easier, I think. Okay. Now, but it's so great to meet you here on Zoom. This same, can, I can say the same on me, you know. <laughs> I saw this beautiful paintings of yours on Instagram, and um, uh, you've also painted Mariana Tsarova. Yeah. Yeah, and and I've done a photo shoot with her, so I know her um, from there, and also from working at the Staatsoper. But your paintings are so beautiful, and then I discovered that you sing as well. So what what came first, the singing or the painting? Uh, I think that uh, the both of them is just a part of me, and I can decide. So <laughs> okay. So as a child, did you paint a lot or, or draw, make drawings? And I did always the, the both and I started seeing and paint uh, earlier than speak. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but where did you grow up? I grew up in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, I and born in musician family. So my mother, she's a conductor and music tourist. My grandmother was a very good pianist. <laughs> really? So I was surrounded of music all my life and the art as well. Really? So with your mom being a conductor, um, did you then play an instrument or uh, was singing always the thing that you did? So I sang from three years old already on the really? stage just because oh, wow. my mom was taking me always to her job. Yeah. She was a teacher in music school and she had an ensemble uh, just because sometimes she didn't have babysitter. And mm. I started very fast. I don't know. <laughs> I was really good in that. And I it made a lot of fun for me. Mm. So I already sang a few solo phrases when I was three years old. And then when I was five years old, I started playing piano. Okay. So, and the mm. first teacher was my grandmother. Okay. Oh, how wonderful. But I love this idea that as a child, you just grew up um, and and hearing the music and just, it, it must feel then very natural for you, the stage. Yeah. And also look like when my mom need to cook or did something, she just switch on some opera like Snigurochka. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching that like for a few hours I was switch off for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you didn't watch Disney films, you watched opera uh, opera. Yeah, I really I like it always. All my life classical music. <laughs> <laughs> But now, uh, and also, how wonderful that you that you started music lessons with your grandma. So, for how long did you uh, play the piano with her? Mm. So, um, my granny, she was ill, and when I was maybe seven years old, she went actually to Vienna to okay. get some treatment, and we stopped our lessons. And I was not easy child. Look like only with her, I was good. Like I really uh, wanted to impress her and I did my best. Mm -hmm. And when she went, I just, I didn't play it all, all few years. Mm -hmm. I started to do sport, like in pro professional way, uh, water skiing. And then really like intensive I started to play piano when I was maybe 14 years old. 
but I practiced like crazy. Really? Yeah. I Because I really wanted to study uh, music and I studied as conductor. Really? And for conductor, yes. Yeah. In Ukraine, you need a good level of piano. Mm-hmm. And I was like almost zero at that time. So mm-hmm. as a child, I played very well, but then I stopped and sure, I for- forgot everything. Mm-hmm. But so you were driven and and to so it was self driven really because you decided you wanted to be a conductor as well. Was it your mom that inspired you? Uh, to be honest, I always wanted to be a singer, mm-hmm. but in my family, mother and grandmother told me, "Look, like singers, they don't do anything. They are very lazy. They don't <laughs> study. <laughs> you need to study something serious." And conductor okay. is like. Singing lessons, piano lessons. Mm. Uh, also, we had choir and very good solfeggio. So mm. it's not easy study at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm really thankful that I had this basis, you know, mm. because now it's much easier for me to learn any piece and also to understand it in a little bit another way and to learn it really fast. Mm-hmm. So do you? So you finished your studies as conductor. Do you, and, and, uh, mm-hmm. I studied two years as conductor, and then I switched to singer oh, because oh, some okay. some uh, vocal teacher just told me, Anastasia, you have to switch. You will be amazing opera singer. You have oh, voice, okay. and yeah, so. I changed, and also because of choir, we sang every day in choir, and it was not uh, not simple pieces, mm. also very high, and my chords were not okay. Mm. I was always ill, like, I don't know, every two months I had something, so I, we decided with my family that it's better to, you know, to save the voice and yeah. to take care. Mm. And to focus then on the singing. Yeah, I mm. had amazing teacher in Ukraine who were, I don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, a bit fanatic in job, look like so passionate. And mm. uh, she teach me every day and one more student. Really? Look like she really believe and she teach every day for free. We just, we were like a part of her family. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, all celebrations we were together also like christmas we also sang in christmas we had lesson <laughs> really oh, but how amazing so she she did it all for free she did it for free it's her principle look like she do it if she do it every day if she believes she do it only for free she was a big diva so local but still she was singing 35 years in the theater the main roles like Traviata, Violetta, uh, Rosina, Susanna, I don't know, a, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And she don't need money that much. Look like she's more, she wants her students to be the best. <laughs> really? yeah. But now uh, this is this must also be amazing that you can learn from somebody like that. So she's really passionate and it's really that you can see that this is, it comes from the heart then, from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I was very lucky to meet her and to be in her class also because we are the same type of voice, like coloratura. Um, and also because I don't know when we are studying, we have only a few lessons per week and we actually don't realize what is the job in mm. reality. Look like mm-hmm. so much does it need just one role to learn? Mm-hmm. You really need to be so disciplined and so concentrated with that. Yeah, because uh, when you when you learn, I presume it's pieces. You learn specific pieces, but when you learn a role, it's the whole the whole combination of things that you have to do. Yeah, yeah. And you really need to love it. <laughs> Otherwise, really? it's mm-hmm. not possible to make it, I think. Mm-hmm. So from there, was it from the Ukraine? Uh, the, then you had to uh, 
decide to go to make it a career. So where did you come to Vienna or what was the next step for you? Yeah, I was coming to Vienna actually for babysitting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes, like, I don't know, two weeks, the people go for vacation and I was sitting babysitter of with, with child. Mm-hmm. And I just had the idea, look like I'm here and there is university near me, why I can try Mm-hmm. And I came to some teacher, also, so my granny, she helped me with connections because she was here and she knew a lot of people. And I came, I think, to Sima Gabriele. Mm-hmm. I was maybe 16 years old or something. And she told me, look like, yeah, you, you need to try. You have, mm-hmm. yeah, you, maybe you will make it in a few years. Mm-hmm. And then... I was coming to Visca and she also told me the same. And uh, then I just did my exam first in MDV and I didn't pass. <laughs> I, okay. I also was so nervous. I think it was like my first time and I was incredibly nervous. And then in one week I did to MOOC and it was successful. So, and I'm studying now here. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, it's the right place then for you, I believe. You know, if if one door closes, then another door opens. So yeah, completely. You're at the right place. Yeah. So now, um, for you studying, do you get a lot of opportunities also to perform, or do you do concerts as well? Uh, I think that the most part of opportunities I got through auditions, not oh, through okay. university. Mm-hmm. So sure, we had few projects. But it was like kind of baby projects, I think. Okay. <laughs> but like, I don't know when you have half, half a year for one opera. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's really like, it's good for debut. And oh, okay. my first role in university, it was like Fure. It, it's very little in Gluck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Die Be- board. And the second one was Zilberklang in Mozart, Schauspiel Directo, and a little piece of Zaida. Um, and it was cool experience and very relaxed. But then I came to auditions and I did a lot of festivals, a lot of things. Also in my uh, city, I came for a few concerts with orchestra. Uh, so now it goes just like one people advice to another people and just audition, singing for them, sometimes successful, sometimes not successful. Sure, when you, we have different, you know, how to say, uh, like uh, when you come and you sleep in hostel and yeah. sure, sometimes you don't sleep at all and you mm-hmm. come like, you can't you can show anything. Yeah. So this it's um now it's the pressure of getting the jobs or getting the opportunities for you. Yeah, it's um, it's I think a long way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and but it's interesting mm-hmm. and every time I learn a lot. Really. Mm-hmm. I also spoke to a, a a singer, an opera singer, a young opera singer who said that she takes every audition as just an experience. You know, she goes and she sees what she learns from it. And if she gets the job, then, or if she gets the part, then it's wonderful. But if she doesn't, then it was a good experience. Yeah. And also it's always very good motivation, just like to have some goal. Look like now I'm preparing, I don't know, for audition for Dusseldorf opera studio and mm-hmm. I need to prepare I don't know six hours or something and I go to my teacher and you're working really hard and then also if it doesn't work also if I sang only one hour I'm incredibly happy that I learned everything oh, yeah. and that now it's just in another level in another quality and if I go to the concerts or to next audition I'm already prepared so how do you get to these these auditions? Do you have to just constantly have a look 
what is available and then decide uh, this is where I want to go now. Yeah, I think there are a lot of websites mm. where opera singers can find these opportunities like Audition Oracle, also some Facebook groups. Only the thing that we have, you know, look like budget and the money, <laughs> they have limit. Oh, yeah. Every audition, it's a lot of money. Mm. And you sh should really check everything about this company. Is it serious? If they really look like uh, it's a lot of aspects. If I'm ready for it or it's too high level, so better oh, maybe yeah. to try something less, you know. Yeah, so you have a lot to consider before you go to audition like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for you as an opera singer, you you have to constantly study. So you you always have to uh, study new roles, study new pieces. And um, is this something you enjoy about this career? Oh, I like it. So I I used to sing every day. I used to study every day, and it's like. It's such a traveling. I don't know, like sometimes in yourself, you can find such a lot of things in music, through music uh, in, inside, you know. Mm -hmm. And also because it's the theater, that because it's always some lyric text, some poem or something, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> But I spoke to a bass singer the other day and we talked about this I, this fact that uh, when you sing a role now um, and, and you sing it again in a few years' time, then it changes also how you sing it and, and you know, how you um, do this role. So do you, can you also find that uh, as you grow older and, and, and as you get more experience that you sing the roles differently? Completely. So first, technically, because we really? all grow up just mm -hmm. because of the body. It's so natural. We are growing and sometimes we need to change something. And also because we are finding different people on our way who tell us advices, sometimes good, sometimes not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But we try to improve every time. Um and what was difficult a few years ago, now it's nothing. And also, look like, uh, I think that uh, sometimes we have a role of mother or a, a role of person who lost people, I don't know, yeah? And when we can take it from our own experience from life, sure, it will be much stronger. And also, as actor, when you take it, Every time in your, I don't know, it's look like we have some animal inside and every time we put, we open the cage of, of this oh, okay. animal to mm. give him possibility to come, you mm. know, <laughs> and every time it works easier and easier and it makes more and more fun. And, and uh, like when you do the role first time, you have to think, so sometimes not, sometimes yes, but you still have some technical things to like, oh, now coming difficult place, I need to breathe <laughs> a, bit, oh, okay. a little bit before, I don't know. And you think look like sometimes you you try to breathe through mouth, you try to breathe through nose, but in one point it just works, look like natural, and you don't think about it and you can really do art and it's really cool. And also this connection with audience when you feel that look like now they're yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you described it so well. I mean, it's I can understand, and also this life experience that you bring to the roles. And this is probably why certain roles are um better to sing at later stages in your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also look like it's so different to sing 
the role like aria in concert and the role in opera. Mm-hmm. And I, f- I think that in opera it's much easier to do it mm-hmm. in concert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that? Because when we are coming on the stage, the most part of time opera is written so good, look like we have time really to use to this atmosphere and to go to the story. So we are no anymore, look like I'm not anymore Anastasia, I'm Rosina. And okay. Rosina, she don't have any hesitation. She don't, um, how, how to say, she's not nervous about audience, about what the people think. She's Rosina. <laughs> and it's much easier, I think. Okay. So you go into the character then? Yeah, yeah. Because psychologically, it's also so important to find a way. Because so, like you can be amazing in classroom with your teacher, but on the stage, you can lose everything sometimes. And when you have a role, you are, you are protect yourself with that. So this acting part of of the opera, do you enjoy that? Yeah, very much. It's for me the <laughs> the biggest enjoyment to play, mm-hmm. to play with colleagues, mm-hmm. and really, yeah, it's it just a game. I I don't know. I feel like a child that <laughs> oh, finally can play. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, I can I can feel your wonderful enthusiasm and and energy about that so it's amazing that you feel that way but now anastasia tell me about your paintings oh <laughs> yeah i have a lot also or furniture and everything i yeah. think that it's the main sponsor of my study really <laughs> yeah because i see you do exhibitions as well yeah, uh, thanks God. I don't know, especially here in Vienna, um, the artist Kreis is very open and very friendly to the new people and also to foreign people. So I didn't have any like problem or fight to do exhibition or to sell something. It goes themselves. And what inspires you to paint? What what? Uh, because I see you you painted Maria Callas as well. Ah, so yeah, you, yeah. Oh, the most part of time, I just I like I see the painting <laughs> like <laughs> me. Uh, it's very strange and very difficult to describe. For sure, mm. I'm not that crazy, but look like I knowing details how I want to do that sometimes I see it in my dreams so the first time when I started really to paint it was like just in my dream I saw a big walls and all these paintings and I felt such how to say trembling I don't know excitement and now every time when I start first I feel this excitement look like yeah I I can do that. Look like I know how to do that. And also uh there are a lot of things that inspire us just everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I feel look like I want to see it on a canvas. And that's yeah. all. <laughs> and did you have training? Did you study art? Or is this all coming from you? So uh my mother, she had a friend who is artist, professional artist, and who, uh, who is working as art teacher of painting. And she was always in our home. And one time, uh, she just she told to my mama, "Do you want me to give a few lessons to your girl because she liked to paint? Because I was painting just all day long when I was ill and didn't go to school." staying home I I was painting I don't know like 20 paintings every day just all the time 
10 hours every day. Really? And until now, it's, it's, it's for me nothing. I can stay and paint like two days <laughs> without pause. I, I just, now I think about my words. So mm. I, I try to limit myself. But she told, like, do you want it? And my mother told, yeah, why not? Uh, I was always painting, but she gave, gave me a few lessons. Mm. Uh, it was like private lessons. And uh, she showed me a few things. Mm. And then I started to paint more in professional way when I was uh, 15 years old. Mm. Just one friend of my mom did a joke and told her, like, I want to order a painting. Mm. Can your daughter do that? And oh, my wow. mother told, mm, yeah, why not? And yeah. They didn't ex- expect that I will do it in that well a way. Mm-hmm. Also, my mom, when she saw what I painted, she told me, like, Anastasia, you should stop singing, stop doing music and do only that. <laughs> uh, because it was al- already looking kind of professional. And actually, yeah. I didn't study oil painting. Okay. I studied only gouache and very little. Mm. But... I watched a few videos in YouTube, how they do that. Mm-hmm. And then I just, so the friend of mom, he was paying for the materials. I bought these materials and they painted and that's all. Amazing. And then yeah. Other people came, came, came. I did maybe only three paintings and I already create a group in Facebook look like Anastasia Karpenko artist. Amazing. <laughs> Well, you are (laughs) multi-talented because of the music and the painting. Yeah, it's amazing that you can do that. But now, Anastasia, um, tell me what what are the wishes for you for the future? Oh, my big wish is to sing in the theater, Mm -hmm. to sing in good theater with good orchestra, with great colleagues near. So it's just what I want. Also, I want to maybe to teach more painting. First, I want to study it better and more in professional way. And who knows, maybe I will create a school. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. At least now I I teach in, in private way. Mm-hmm. Most part, it's, it's children. Mm-hmm. But... It makes me happy and also I start to see it in completely another way. Because one thing, when you paint yourself, I don't think at all. But when you try to help another person Mm -hmm. to understand and and to find a way, uh, because the most important, I think, is to understand it here. Then you, the skill, yeah? the perspective and everything like really it's here Mm -hmm. and it's very very interesting for me when they start to understand and when they start to do some results I'm incredibly happy well this is so uh, lovely that you say that because I many people I talk to say that they teach art or they teach music say that they learn actually so much from their students. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Maybe sometimes I steal their ideas. <laughs> 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 because it looked like they do something and I think, whoa, it's so cool combination. Mm-hmm. And yeah, also kids, they are just, I don't know, they are genius, honestly. Mm-hmm. They see everything in such an authentic way. And maybe they're also much freer, you know, because they they don't have all these boundaries that we acquire and as we grow older. Yeah, that's that's completely. They just having fun. Look, <laughs> <laughs> they really they just they like the lines, they like the colors, and they think, yeah, it's look like we need to keep it. Yeah, Be- because then it's really. Uh, the most important is to make us happy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And 
when it makes you happy, it makes happy also in other people. And it's one of the most important goals of art, I think. Sure, there are a lot of goals, God. <laughs> also like education, also like to see things in another from another point of view. But happiness, it's something that makes sense of it, mm -hmm. that improves this world. Absolutely. And I just uh, so wish that art, uh, all forms of art can be taught in schools uh, alongside maths and science so that they, because I think there's so much uh, benefit for children to, to do all forms of art. You know, it doesn't have to be painting as such, but, you know, different forms of art should be really um, a priority in schools. Yeah, but also it must be allowed from parents. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think look like I was so lucky with my mother because she allowed me everything. Mm -hmm. be, uh, art is sometimes very dirty. Art mm -hmm. is sometimes like... <laughs> she mm -hmm. allowed me everything. Look like I was taking a part of my wardrobe and just <laughs> break it and paint mm. on it really? who will allow that i don't mm. have such a lot of kids now that parents look like they don't like if some spot somewhere i don't know if the colors go on the carpets it's already catastrophic i don't know yeah. it's very important just to allow person to do art sometimes mm. and to understand that mm, okay that is it's money but you really you can buy another one and it can be a piece of art that will so that has some chance <laughs> yeah. to um, do a very good thing for for the world at all mm -hmm. you know yeah, and I, I also heard of of um, a photographer. I can't remember the name now. Where they t uh, the article um, said that she, her whole lifetime, she t did photography, but never showed anybody. And it's only after her death that they discovered her photographs. And I think she must have enjoyed the process, this process of taking the photographs. And although the, nobody saw it, it was something that that brought her joy. So mm -hmm. art, you know, art can be that as well. Yeah, for sure. First, you do it for yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. Because it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. But Anastasia, this was so lovely talking to you. You've got such a lovely energy and, um, and you're so talented. Thank you very much. I also saw your artworks as photographer. It's so inspiring. Oh, thank you so much. And um, listen, I hope really that all your wishes come true. I mean, many people who say their wishes on this um, platform, their wishes have come true. But I think you, you already, um, a lot of your wishes have come true already. So I think, I think there's a great future for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. You too. And I hope to meet you in person one day. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All the best. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Ciao. Thank you. Bye.